How's it going everyone? This is Aaron Hilliard for Mushroom Wonderland. Today I'm on the property where I do my private foray tours and I'm gonna go for a walk, a little scout walk to see what's growing out here in this beautiful 120 acre preserve of old growth and second growth conifer forest. Tons of mushrooms growing out here right now because it's October. We have a huge fungal diversity. So let's head into the woods and I'll just describe mushrooms as I come upon them. So please hit subscribe. Thanks for joining Mushroom Wonderland. Mushroom Wonderland. Yeah, this place is amazing. We have a big lodge where we meet up and have reishi hot chocolate and do a cooking demo. At the end, there's this beautiful lake known as Lake Flora. Look at here. These are super crazy looking with all these dangly bits hanging off of them. These are called Strophaeria ambigua, or the ambiguous Strophaeria. And I'll pluck this one so we can look underneath. It's got gray gills, appendiculate margin, all those little dangly bits. And uh, yeah, they're pretty common this time of year. Pretty, pretty big mushroom, you know, medium to large size mushrooms. Saprobes, just eating decaying matter. So I'm gonna come down onto the lake trail and go around to the conifer forest where I think there's just hundreds of types of mushrooms. Right here, really cool amphitheater area oh, with some russulas, some brown russulas, 100 different species of these here in the Northwest at least. So I don't know how to ID those two species, but the brittle gills, some brown ones. All right, right here, this rosy colored mushroom. I don't really want to uproot it because of our foray tomorrow, but oh, there's a slug eating it. And it is edible for humans too. It's got a yellow base. This one, Gomphidius subroseus. Look at that slimy, glutinous layer. Oh, look at that. The hideous Gomphidius. That's gross. And another a brown, um, brown russulas. Oh, little foamy topsis, Montsier, cute little red belted conch. It's just like perfect. And an even cuter one on this side. Why am I saying cute? Everything's cute today. What's that? Oh yeah, cute. We have more. Oh, these are the the false yellow foot. So these ones, Chrys Chrysomphalina, and it it looks just like a winter chanterelle. Look at this. Looks just like a winter chanterelle, but that is a false winter chanterelle. So these are like fruiting a lot this year and they're, they're not toxic. How do you know? Good question. These have like real gills, like true gills under there. And the winter chanterelle has more like false gills. Gosh, it just doesn't want to focus on these. There we go. Has false gills or like veins. This one has true gills. And uh, gosh, you know, the color is almost exactly the same. The little belly button in the center is almost exactly the same. Can you eat it? This unknown edibility, but it's probably not toxic because people would have definitely confused these and eaten them thinking they were yellowfoots before and been in the hospital and we would know about it. So I would say non toxic. Usually they're so rare that you would never have to worry about accidentally eating them, really. But look at this big flush of them. So that's kind of cool. Maybe we'll find the real thing to look at. But like those. Man, like, if I didn't know better, I, I would pick those thinking they were winter chanterelles. Oh, look at here's some nice little Suillus lakei. Wow, there's a lot of them right here. So the Suillus have that yellow sponge surface underneath there. And, uh, yeah, these are edible, but forgettable. I guess they dry them in Eastern Europe and powder them and then use them in soups and stocks. But Sue Willis is actually a pretty interesting genus because they can survive where most other mushrooms can't, like ectomycorrhizal mushrooms that grow with trees. Sue Willis do such a good job and they get picked on by a lot of other mushrooms. Here's a good example of that Sue Willis lachii, the furry Sue Willis. And then this one parasitizes them. This is the Gomphidius. We'll pull that one up, but this is actually a parasite mushroom on this mushroom. So. This one decided I'm not going to waste my time. So how do you know it was parasite on that mushroom? 
Yeah, well, uh, early on, somebody noticed that these were always growing around these pine trees, and they thought, oh, they must be associated with the pine. But then they noticed there's always Suillus nearby. Somebody discovered, wait, these aren't even with the trees. These are actually parasites on the Suillus mushrooms. Right here, I think, uh, yeah, we got a big, huge white chanterelle growing right there. Let's just have a look, show you guys. Cantharella subalbitis. They're starting to get a little slimy. It's getting later in the season. So, um, I'm gonna... Alone? Yeah, the white chanterelles tend to grow a little more solitary. I'm gonna just kinda put this back in. So right here, we're starting to see gold. And I see a lot of actually young, nice golden chanterelles right here. And I noticed right here, look at this, how ragged it is. This was wildlife, like a deer chomped this off. That's not a knife cut. That's some animal. There's a, a young golden chanterelle right there. I didn't even bring a knife. We're not really picking today. Just kind of scouting. There's more goldens, look at them all in here. So this mushroom right here, same color tone as a chanterelle, but it's not. This one's a crogomphus, another one here, and another parasite on Suillus. So Suillus just getting picked on by all these other macro fungi, but they're okay. Suillus is a survivor. The way I remember Suillus, yep, here's its other parasite, the gomphidias. The way I remember Suillus is I think that Bruce Willis's dear old mom must be named Suzanne. Good old Sue Willis, you know. That joke will never get old to me. I will forever say that. So right down here, you see all these little mushrooms sprouting up, and right here, the these are the yellow foots. These are the, the actual winter chanterelles. And look at all of them back there. Gorgeous. So winter chanterelle, craterellus tubiformis. These are really good edible, I think. And they're not even in the same genus as chanterelles. So if you have a chanterelle sensitivity, you could still eat these. Look at all the chanterelles Oh yeah, golden chanterelles and winter chanterelles all in the same patch. Look at them all. Very nice. I came here last year and yeah, the winter chanterelles back in this area and going onward in this really dense stuff. There's there so many of them. So actually, I might pick some of these. We're probably going to come ac across a bigger patch. And I want to show people the winter chanterelles, but I might actually like collect quite a few for myself today. That's nice. Look how yellow the foot is on that. I mean, that's one way you can certainly tell the difference between those false ones. And the false ones always grow off of wood, and these grow in the soil. So cute. We're really trying to not pick mushrooms, but here we are. Oh, there's like this really dense little grove back here that's like beckoning me to come in. It's just like, come in to this dark area of the forest. It's so inviting. Let's go back here. Don't tell anyone. Look at this. Very thick in here. Yep, some yellow foot growing on that little log right there. Often these super dense areas aren't that great of habitat, but the yellow foot, they do like it in these spots. But we're gonna collect some of these yellow foots because there are a lot back here. And I think they're tasty. Yeah, you can pick huge amounts of these yellow foot though. They're, that's one thing. Is that they usually grow in big troops like this. A long, tall stipe, yellow, yellow base. And uh, yeah, lots of them usually. There we go, it's like literally right on the trail. That was pretty. Yeah. Ah, the forest smells good. Yeah, Kaya just spotted this really pretty. Bright red-capped Lexinum. So they have these little scabers on the stalk. You can see those like patches of grayness on the stalk right there. And they get like hairy. But this one, I, I want to leave it to mature. Really pretty bolete-like mushroom. 
Another chanterelle. These are real easy to pick because they're just so bright. Just really stand out. Another button. Yeah, I, was, I think I was just looking at that. Nice Romaria coral mushrooms coming up. We really didn't mean to pick all these mushrooms, but it just kind of happens when you're in a place like this that there's so many mushrooms. You just can't, you just can't not. I mean, a lot of them are just going to rot. So you better, better get them while the getting is good, you know? Yeah, the hill, usually, that's the Krogomphus. Look at that. Somebody might think that's a chanterelle. Oh, yeah. But it's it's not. But it's also edible. But when you cook these, they turn bright purple in the pan. Really will just, like, be shockingly purple. And chanterelles don't do that. So the Krogomphus, this one, look at it. If, if I threw it in there, it's got dark dark gills, you know. It's pretty different. But look at them next to each other. Krogomphus tomentosus. Cantharellus formosus, the difference. So I'm going to leave the Krogomphus though. I've eaten them kind of as a novelty, but not real yummy. And they kind of look freaky. It's a gilled bolete. It's another one of these boletes that actually has gills instead of a sponge. We're lucky here in the Northwest to have forests like this, like at our doorstep. You know, I wouldn't want to live anywhere else. We travel a fair bit, and I like traveling, but I don't know. I love this place. I just, these forests are just serenity to me. More signs of wildlife. Uh, you know, wildlife eat these mushrooms too. I've seen squirrels dragging big rustlers across the trail. I've watched a squirrel hiding a porcini under a branch. I mean, of course, slugs and... Um, all kinds of little mites that eat the mushrooms. There's a lot going on out here that we don't even consider. But we're not the only ones eating them, so maybe leave some behind for these other animals that are hungry, like the slugs and the deer and the squirrels. All right, I spotted the Turbinillus flocosus or, or the bed shitter chanterelle. <laughs> That's what they call it. Yeah, very different, super vase shaped. So I'm curious as to why they gotta be shaped like that. Why are they collecting water? It's almost like they're funneling rainwater into their mycelium or maybe it's to hydrate the fruit body so that it can produce spores. Either way. These ones are like super boring looking, brown mushroom, really bright white gills and they're not touching the stipe, very free. And growing in a little group out of the ground down here. So I think Melanoleuca, kind of a rare genus, tough to ID, but they always have those really tight packed white gills and uh, they're not attached to the stipe. Another big white chanterelle just kind of peeking out right there. They tend to be a little bigger, but they're kind of more dirty. And uh, I don't know, to me, they're a little less attractive than golden chanterelles, but. I hear some people say that they prefer them to eat. I don't really eat either, so I guess my eyes just prefer the golden ones. Down here, a few different things going on. Some type of small suillus, and then these, they, they're called pine spikes is kind of their common name. Here's one right here, another Krugomphus, not the tomentosis, but look at the gills on that. Isn't that beautiful? Kind of thinks it looks kind of like an acorn. I see it. But man, the camera does not want to zoom in, uh, focus on these things. It's just like, you're trying to look at something else. You're not looking at that mushroom. Stop looking at that mushroom. Oh, score right here. The people are going to like to see that. Look at that Hydnellum pecii, the bleeding tooth fungus. Wow, this one is in all phases. So it still has blood red guttation on it, but it's also turning that brown black color in the center. They really turn into a different looking mushroom when they get really mature. You wouldn't even be able to tell that was the bleeding tooth. But there it is. Kind of common actually in my neck of the woods. And uh, they've been fruiting for a while, but happy to see one that still has that blood red guttation. These are non-toxic, but they're very woody. And they're a good dyer's mushroom too, I guess. So you can collect these to, uh, to dye fabric with, um, or they're just really photogenic. They're studying them for anticoagulant properties, but I'm gonna definitely leave that one here and bring the group to check that guy out. That is something special, so cool. I'll show you guys what it looks like to get into a really nice 
chanterelle patch, but without a knife, it's okay. Um, so this area, <laughs> dang, let's look right in here. It's like kind of hard to not like be showing off a little bit right now. <laughs> Dude. They just keep going and going and going. Oh my gosh, look at the size of this guy. Look at this. Holy smokes, look at that. Oh. oh wow. That's a monster. Wow. Wow. Just like multi branch cespitose. I mean, chanterelles just don't get better than this, really. Oh my gosh, look at that clump of them. No way. All right, I can hold that one. Let's see what you got there. There's several, I think. Yeah. I mean, you could fill up a uh, basket. One of them is icky. These ones, uh, I don't know. <laughs> oh, man. Those are big. I mean, it, what do you think? This one? Yeah, I think it's good. I mean, you can see how picky we're getting. Some people are just like, oh, my gosh, you're not throwing that one away. But look at our basket. This is like in no time flat. How many do you need? I mean, we could be. Oh, there's another one right there. Yeah, this one's a little branch. Boom! Oh, that's a nice one. That, that wasn't the one I was looking at. Oh, she saw a different one. Oh, behind the back side. This is a good patch. Remember, you always find the best mushrooms on the way back to the car. <laughs> yeah. That one's icky. Are we on the way back? Not yet. Not yet. Man, we can't spend too much more time out here. Look at this. I think we got probably enough golden chanterelles, man. I'm not trying to brag here, but you just got, I mean, like this is the most epic year. There's so many right here, but I'm just gonna leave them. It's hard to leave them behind. Look at, oh, all back in those woods right there, right here, just more buttons are everywhere. That one's pretty bad. Wouldn't keep that, but right here, these are just gonna go bad if they don't get collected. So friends and family, we're going to be generous with the chanterelles. Oh, there's just so many back there, too. It's starting to rain real nice out here. All right, this is the last one. <laughs> All right, that's a full basket. Happy trails, everybody. Look at that. It's a crazy good year. Timing is good. Filled up our basket. It's starting to rain. All right, everybody, I think I saw what I needed to see. Lots of mushrooms out here. So um, our foray tomorrow is gonna be an undoubted success. It's not always guaranteed that we're gonna find a lot of chanterelles, but you know, when I take you into Mushroom Wonderland, there's a pretty good chance that we will. So go to mushroom-wonderland.com. You can look to see if there's any forays open. They sell out pretty quick and uh, we're running out of season here, so. I'm um, thinking about opening some up in the spring too. Educational forays should be fun. So until the next episode, much love. Peace out.